Co. Our friends from accounting firms. You should be following taxes right now. I'm like looking at this deadline. Maybe with three more days. Sneak that copy of the handout that tells you a little bit about who's presenting here today. If you didn't get a copy of the handout downstairs, that's okay because there's an app for that. I was actually spending some time this morning making sure things were working. I got like a new phone like last week, and you know what that means. Nothing is configured. So, uh, so for those of you that are interested, go to um, your app store of choice, Android and iOS, and soon to be Windows Mobile. So I'll make my Microsoft friends here happy. If you have a Blackberry, get a new phone. So that's my only advice to you. Uh, and download Tech Breakfast To Go. And actually, while it's loading right now, there you go, I'm their first demo of the day. And with Tech Breakfast To Go, what we'll do is we'll let you know about all the Tech Breakfast events happening nationwide. As I mentioned, Tech Breakfast is a national event series. We're over 17,000 members now nationwide. We're in eight cities on a monthly basis and two additional ones on a quarterly basis, including our new Wilmington, Delaware location. Um, and we're in uh, here in beautiful, sunny New York as well as Boston and D.C., Columbia, Maryland, Baltimore, Northern Virginia, Raleigh, Austin, and Silicon Valley. And we do this, yes, people in Silicon Valley like, do not wake up before 10 o'clock. That's like the biggest problem in Silicon Valley. So, uh, but we also, in addition to these uh, fabulous tech breakfast events, we do special events. We just had an event last week down in Columbia, Maryland with the founder of Micros, which was amazing. We also have a venture capital event coming up Next week, I can't believe how soon this is, a week from Friday, up in Boston, our friends from DLA are actually participating in that, plus about 20 additional venture capitalists. It'll be a lot of fun, so I'll tell you a little bit about that during our event shout-out period. But anyway, I uh, come here to show you uh, what's happening here today, so if you click into the New York Tech Breakfast event, you'll see our friends from Breather, Gemshelf, Linksphere, and Uglu. Um, you can click and find a little bit more information here. So. That's Lee in person, but that's what he looks like in a photo. <laughs> you can see more information about them. Uh, a little more information about Breather. I guess they're up in Montreal now. I didn't... Oh, nice. That's great. Uh, now, but now you're down here in New York. Uh, you can find a little more information about them. Uh, you can click on that Twitter tag. The reason why I show you this, if it's been configured, which it looks like it has, is that you can take a photo, and if you take a photo, that'll automatically get added to our um, photo album. So that's why I show that to you. They're also here to get your feedback. And so if you click on the feedback button, you can obviously provide it in person, but, you, but we aggregate all of your feedback back to them and we provide it to them afterwards as a way to help them with their presentation. So on a scale of one to five bagels, because that's how we roll here at Tech Breakfast, you could say, what did you think about their idea? You could say, cool idea, you know, call me, maybe provide your phone number. Uh, it's anonymous, so we don't know who you are. So if you want, if you really do want them to call you, they actually know who you are. How well you think they executed on their idea, how well you thought they presented. And once again, this is really for their feedback to let them know so that they can get some value out of it. Because they're here for a reason too. They're here to either get your feedback, maybe hear their, their, their in the case of Google, they're really just literally just announcing, just releasing. Maybe they want your feedback, they're looking for customers, they're looking for investors, maybe they're looking for press. Sometimes they're later stage companies, they're looking for help. So, you know, the last one we had in Northern Virginia, we had Capital One do a demo, which was really cool. They're trying really hard to act like a startup. So, uh, they're doing all the things that startups do. They're like, what do you mean? So, um, yeah, so that is really Tech Breakfast in a nutshell. That's how we do, that's how we roll. Um, and we're also gonna do some open shout outs uh, for jobs and for events if we have enough time. So, so keep, an out, keep an ear out for that if I call those out. All right, so without further ado, are you ready to go? Ready My to friend. Go. All right, let me give you a tight clip mic. Can you, can you guys hear me? Okay. Uh, actually, yeah, we can oh, sure, no worries, no worries. All right, so who here has heard of Breather? Oh, okay. great. Who has it on their phone? Ah, okay. So we have work to do. Okay, great. So for those of you who don't know, Breather is a platform that provides on-demand private space you can book via your smartphone. So imagine what Zipcar has done for cars, right? So before, you couldn't rent a car by the hour. So in the past, you couldn't rent a car by the hour. And right now, before we started, you couldn't rent a space by the hour. You had to go month to month for commercial real estate. So we said, let's change that, right? Let's unlock the city for folks. We think that there is a critical mass of folks out there who don't um, need space month to month. They need it for an hour or two. So we're like, let's, let's build that. And let's not just build it, let's make it a, a global thing. So we started Breather with the in mind 
with the concept that we are going to take commercial real estate leases. We're going to take the long-term risk, five years, eight years. We're going to furnish those spaces, build them out, make them look beautiful, put Kava key locks on them and create an app where you can unlock those spaces. We thought that would disrupt commercial real estate, disrupt the way people do business, and really create a new paradigm out there in the world. So that's, that's what Breather is. Uh, my name is Lee. I uh, come from Goldman Sachs. I was a banker there and a big client strategy before I joined Breather. I joined about two years ago. Uh, and I've never been around a harder working, most more impressive group of people. Um, so what I want to do is take you guys through our app, take you guys through some real world scenarios so you guys can understand how it works. And then we'll do Q&A uh, where you guys can ask more questions. He's going to read my text. <laughs> okay, so this is Breather, okay? Now what's really cool for me is that we just released another version of the app with, uh, with search on the top. So I'll take you guys through a real world scenario. So let's say you and I have a company. We need to have a real serious meeting. Starbucks won't do. We don't have a, a co-working member, so we can't afford that yet. What we're going to do is we're going to open up Breather and find a space you can rent by the hour. So let's say we want to meet in Columbus Circle, or even better, Flatiron. We want to put in 31 West, 26th Street. So spaces around there pop up. Now, um, it's only a, going to be a meeting for, I'm going to show some filters here. I want to meet at 3 p.m. today. Um, we're going to meet for an hour. And we're going to have, let's say, three attendees, right? So all these spaces qualify for that. So I'm going to click on space. And now I see a breather room. I'm going to stop here and just give you guys an uh, overview of some of the elements that you, that you see here and you're going to see in most breather rooms. You see a, a table where you can sit down and meet. But you also see a comfortable couch where you can take a nap, work um, on your laptop in a comfortable setting like a lot of us do at home. Um, what you don't see is that there's a full length mirror as well as a whiteboard in that room uh, for you to ideate um, and get work done. We designed these spaces to make them have a calming feel so that you can get work done in a quiet, peaceful way, which data shows um, is the best and most productive way to get work done. So let's say I see this space, love it. Let's look at you know the amenities there. Couch, table, high-speed Wi-Fi. By the way, every breather space has extremely high-speed Wi-Fi. Um, it's, it's a must. Um, and we really focus on that. Uh, so, read about uh, the space, how to get there, everything like that. I'm going to hit next because I really like the space. Now, here's my slot here, three to four. I can also adjust slots like that from 30 minutes to two hours. I'm going to stick with an hour. And then I can also see how much it's going to cost me. So, because I'm looking for an hour, you see the price down there. I can go down here to 5 p.m., the price will adjust. Now, I always say, think about what's the price of your productivity during a day? What's the loss, some cost of your productivity when you want to have a quiet place with high-speed Wi-Fi to work? Price that in, and you'll see that really is a really good deal. So, hit next here. Boom, it lets me confirm my reservation. Now, it's zero dollars because I'm a regular employee. For you, it'll be 47 bucks. I can invite people on the app. So when I hit invite people, it goes right into my, um, my, my personal list of contacts. All I have to do is click on a few of these. I'm going to click on Megan from the Thrillist because she's one of my top clients and I think she's really cool. She won't mind getting a fake phantom invite. Um, then I'm going to hit uh, X now that she's at it. And now down here you can see add the calendar. This is what's really cool. You can add that reader reservation directly to your calendar. So let's say you're booking further in advance. Um, that meeting is now stuck right there, so you don't have to remember about it. And then you're going to get a notification when it's coming up closer. Also, we have a new feature called recurring reservations. This makes sense if you're a therapist, someone who's looking to use breather in a more recurring way. So I want to meet with clients on Mondays and Fridays. You can do a recurring reservation on breather, so you get this room at this time anytime you want for the next, you can do it for four, five, six months, even a year. We don't care, it's all by the hour, it makes sense for you. I'm not gonna do it for this case. So I'm gonna hit confirm. 
boom, I get this really cool pop-up. I get an email, and Megan, who I invited, gets an email saying she's been invited to a breather, um, and that's it. Now, this that reservation now goes up into this view right here in the top right, all my reservation views. And I can see all my current reservations. Now, I'm going to show you guys the magical part of breather. So I made a reservation, a phantom reservation, earlier this morning. So that you guys can see what happens when you show up to the room. So when you show up to the room, here's the reservation I made. This, you click on your reservation and it's flaking. Now, what's really cool about this is that to enter the room, I all do is click here. And I'm checked in and I get my code. This code changes every hour. That's the code to get into the room. Um, I type in that code and the room's mine. Before and after these reservations, we have a, a whole network of what we call our operational associates who go around and clean the spaces to make sure every time you walk into a breather, it looks exactly like the pictures. And that's it. And that's really how you use the app. Now, if I wanted to extend my booking and there wasn't a booking after me, I can hit extend, pick how long I wanted to extend by, and I get the, I get the booking for a longer bit of time. But that's, that's really how people use breather. Um, whether, you, whether you want to do an offsite uh, with your team, we have larger spaces, I can show you some of those afterwards if you want to talk, or you can do, um, or you can do smaller, more one-on-one -on -one consultations with your life coaching clients or your therapy clients, that all makes sense too. But when you're really trying to cut up and carve up commercial real estate body hour, you can do the losses on there. Right. Good job. Good job. All right. So we have some time to Q&A. I've got the mic. i got the mic as well. So let's uh, start here. Uh, Shane's got a question. But before I head out to, Sh to Shane, I'm just going to ask you one quick question. That's about supply. Yeah. Because, you know, obviously it's like, where are these spaces coming from? You know, obviously we got co-working spaces like, you know, we work and blah, blah, blah. They're offering space probably <laughs> on, at various things. But mm -hmm. these look like commercial spaces that are not on a traditional co-working space. So how, how, where's that supply coming from? Yeah, so we have an exclusive deal with Cushman and Wakefield. They are uh, our, our global exclusive broker. What they do is they know our profile. So our profile for space is anywhere from 200 square feet to 400 square feet. So what they do is they go through CoStar, which is a online platform that shows you all the available commercial real estate in the city, and they will send us spaces that match our profile. We'll look at the price per square foot, run our model, make sure it makes sense, and then we'll go and sign that lease. So you actually sign a long-term lease? We sign these leases from five years, eight years. Because here's the big issue of this, people look at breathing, they think it's a platform, right? It's just like that. You just throw a space Like Airbnb, in. like, I got a space I can put it up on yeah, radar. Yeah, we, we have done that strategically with very, a very small amount of selected partners. But most of those spaces are ours because we want to control the experience. Everyone knows that experience of you see something in the picture and it's not what the picture says. We think that dilutes a brand and over time we won't really outperform. Right. So we control the experience, we will. Good mom, Shane. Where are you with the status of the business right now? So we closed the Series B round last uh, summer. Um, Peter Thiel's that law of interest led that, that round, so we raised $20 million in that round. Overall total funding has been about $35 million. So we just launched uh, in uh, three more markets. So we're in eight markets in total. We're in LA, San Francisco, Chicago, Toronto, Montreal, um, Boston, here in New York, and then we're opening up London and DC very soon. Okay, good. That makes you, that makes you by the way, a My Little Pony, and if you've ever heard that expression. I hope so. There's unicorns with My Little Ponies, yes. Oh yeah, have you run into any regulatory problems in New York City yet? No, so the, the great thing about New York is that the whole concept of subleasing office space has been around for a long time. We just and some of the other institutional players have really broken that mold for a long time. Landlords are okay with subleasing in commercial real estate as long as you, you know, guarantee you're going to take down a liability to that tenant do something wrong to the building. So that's great. We have to run into any of the things that Airbnb ran into. Hey, ask a question, yeah. Okay, two-part question. Two -part question. Uh, cool. First one, maybe I missed it, how do you manage payments? And sure. the second part is how do you manage overstayers? Sure. Great question. Number one, so what I can show you is that when you sign up for breather, you add, you can take a picture of your credit card, just like Uber, right? So your credit card's here. Okay. Um, so that's how we manage payments. And we also have our Breather for Teams program, this is for companies, right? So you can enroll your company. So let's say, say you have a lot of sales guys running around the city, you want them to be able to use breathers to take client calls in a more professional way, right? So you can add your corporate credit card to the company account, and every single person you enroll will get to use that card. And all the invoicing will come to your billing department. Um, to your second question about overstayers, our operational associates, so the ones who come, we leave a 30 minute buffer between every reservation automatically. So they come and show up, they'll knock on the door. Our users are great, they do get out. 
um, but you know, they'll always kind of play it. So if you're still on a call, you're trying to you know, close that job interview, they'll be like, you know what, you're fine, I can stay here for 15 more minutes, um, but if they really know it has to be coming up, they'll, they'll kick you out. Quick question, so I realize this is probably not part of your current model, but you thought about going after hacking the party event space category. That's very interesting that you said that. So we're, we're doing a test right now on the platform. We've worked, so event space is very expensive in the city, especially if you're in solo, flyer. So we have event space partners that we put on our platform. We're gonna see what the demand is for that. If, yeah, I would say if you could Probably hack like the wedding event space category. I think that you could do very, very well. All right, we, should, we should hire you as a consultant. <laughs> okay, I have two questions too. Uh, sure. Why the name Breather? Yeah. And um, are you planning on adding more features like you know adding meeting minutes and stuff like that, like the bigger so meeting experience? That's very interesting. So the name Breather. So I'm going to give you guys a quick side note about our founder, Julian Smith. Um, Julian is from Montreal, um, but before he uh, started Breather, he was a very well-known writer and uh, internet commentator. He actually started the Reddit thread in Montreal. And um, for Julian, he's always um, thought that there should be private, quiet space in cities and travel all the time. So he has this great story about how he was in Seoul, South Korea, and he needed to really get an article finished. And he just really couldn't find a quiet space. He's like, I think that I deserve a quiet space, something I can just Take a breather and then walking around the city all day. I'm sweaty. I just need to sit down somewhere, relax, get my mind together, and get this work done. So I think, you know, when as he and Katarina Rizzi, who was our other co-founders and interior designer, were thinking about things, the whole idea of a room that elicits calm and elicits, uh, you know, a, a feeling of peacefulness was what's in their minds. So that's where I think the word breather came in. In terms of add-ons, I think uh, we have a lot of different add-on ideas. We have to see a critical mass of the de desire first, though, before we add it all. And I haven't heard about being, though, but that's a good one. Yeah. I have two quick questions in the front, back from the front up here. Yeah, yeah uh, my name is Fabio. Congratulations on the presentation. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, two questions for you. First, how do you manage the vacancy? Uh, I believe you should have many standards vacant, all those spaces. How do you manage that? And second, what happens if somebody wants to rent your rooms for? On a more regular basis, so do you get do you give any discount? Because I was making some maps here. Yeah. If you start using that on a more frequent basis, they get much expensive than a, a co-working or something. Like yeah, that. I'll let you know. So to that question, you know, you, you wouldn't rent a zip car every month to month, right? That just doesn't make any sense. That's not how the business model works. So for us, we'll do special cases. The thing is, if people want to do something recurrently, they're in a desperate need. We'll figure out a deal. I'm happy to sit down, look at what their budget is, and make something work. Especially if it is a space that's, you know, what we call low vacancy, we can make something work for them. But that's on a case by case basis. The average booking is 2.5 hours, so we don't run into that too much. Um, uh, your 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 first question about vacancy and about the space being open, we bake that all in. So our break even model has a certain minimum occupancy that we pretty much blast through in every one of our spaces. If we see a space not hitting that, that, uh, that number, we have to reevaluate it to figure it out. Hi, um, I have a question around if you guys, similar to the events question, mm -hmm. um, so this is more around when you're in between flights and sure. maybe you're coming from a beach and you're full of sand, mm -hmm. um, or for women, um, if they may need somewhere to freshen up, before happy hour, or whatever the case is, after work. Before happy hour, awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if there was any marketing done around that, or what, you know, sort of. So right now we're really focusing on the core use cases, uh, which are more for business purposes, but I think our users are, are they'll share on social media if they're doing those things. I think as we get more product market fit and more of a defined like, definition of who we are, we'll start being able to talk about more use cases. Um, but yeah, so before I leave, I wanted to give you guys a really quick note. We're doing this really cool promotion in, in April. So if you, if you have a meeting for more than six hours um, and a breather, we'll pay for the catering. Okay? We'll, we'll cater it for you. So you tell your, your, your bosses or if you're the boss, um, just let me know, give me your business card, we'll follow up. But if you book uh, a six hour reservation or more in uh, April, we'll pay for the catering. And of course, there's always the special tech breakfast discount. Yes, and there it is. <laughs> I get it for you guys, I get it for you guys. There is the tech breakfast discount.
Um, what what number did I give you? <laughs> what do you got? All right. All right. So what, what we can do as well is give everyone a 15% discount on breathers. Um, who, who's here tonight? Just give me their, 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 their contacts. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, All right. Yeah, 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 well, good job. Good job on the demo. All right. I you guys, huh? All right. I like the painter in too, though, man. Any place that comes upon me, they might. You should probably use the, the clip. Mm -hmm. You were just standing up just a moment ago, so our Let's friends from Kiss Patents. Let's go for it. Good morning, guys. This is a big crowd today, so thank you for coming out in the rain. Uh, my name is Carrie. I do community management for Kiss Patent. Uh, if anyone's not familiar, we do intellectual property uh, coverage for startups. So we, uh, we put it actually into the hands of founders. So we like to think of ourselves as a turbo tax of patents, which really cuts a lot of costs. We also recently launched our patent guide, um, and we have an exclusive 20% discount for Tech Breakfast members. Uh, I also received the email that we have a lot of visitors from Belgium. We're also uh, fully operational in the Netherlands and Israel, so anyone who knows a friend of a friend who may be interested, come see me. I will be here, uh, but at the end I'll be at the back by the coffee getting a refill. I have uh, the discount code on the card. I also have my email address on there in case there's any issues with the link on that card. All right, great. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hey guys, good morning. My name is Dave Schwartz. I am a corporate securities partner at DLA Piper. DLA Piper is a large international law firm we are very much focused on the emerging company sector. So we focus working on startups, um, early stage companies, and we help them grow. And we are all over the world. We're over 4,000 attorneys in over 30 countries around the world. And we very much focus on the sector. So if you need any help, both here in the US and abroad, come help us. But frankly, one of the differentiating factors for our firm is not only great legal work, which of course we do, it's also the fact that we try to serve as a true partner for our clients, and for that, we have what's known as our venture pipeline. My colleague Shane Bermelay will tell you a little bit more about that. Hey guys, uh, so I run an advisory group that's called Venture Pipeline, and think of it as like an in-house investment banking platform within a law firm. So what we do is we raise capital on behalf of our emerging growth clients, anything from seed all the way up to kind of low-level private equity. Uh, tell them the best so part. Tell them the best part. Best part is it's free. So I can give you a discount code, but you really don't need one. Uh, but basically, you know, once you're a client of DLA, you become uh, up for consideration to use this platform. So I, I say up for consideration because there is a huge amount of uh, deal flow that we deal with, up to 700 companies per year. Uh, and just given the venture odds out there of things getting funded, we use kind of our expertise to see what we think it is uh, that we're able to take to market. So. Uh, we work on all sectors, all stages, all geographies. Uh, happy to chat with any of you guys, but uh, you know, we're excited about this space and something we're very committed to. Perfect. All right. Great. Thank you. Thanks for having you guys support. You're going to end up being, you're also going to participate in our upcoming Ask a VC event, so you'll see them in a week from now. And finally, of course, our host here, our fabulous guest, James Quick from Microsoft F. Got the mic, so he can just more resonate more. from his head. Yeah, right. Hey, uh, good morning, guys. Uh, this is a great group, especially in the rain. This is more full than we've had in several months. It's fantastic. Um, really, my interest is on the tech side. So there's a lot of people here doing investments, uh, business side, operations, marketing. I'm on the tech side. If you're interested in just kind of chatting about technologies that you're using in your applications, I would love to hear it. We also have some free cloud credits if you're doing any cloud development. But i uh, love to work with startups, uh, especially, like I said, on the tech side, just hear the conversations. I have aspirations down the line. I'm kind of jumping out and doing my own thing as well. Uh, so I kind of live vicariously through the people that I talk here today. Uh, so if you're interested in just kind of chatting after, come up and find me. All right, great. And that's James from Microsoft, our host here, beautiful Times Square building. Okay, we're going to do some more shout outs. Lisa will have you in the next round. So let's keep things going here. Uh, and I think I have a few other stories as well. My friends from Grassi as well. So we'll do that in the next round, but I didn't want to keep uh, Colin me. So Colin, you're up. Jim Shire. Right. Hello, everybody. It's great to be here. My name is Colin Kennedy. I'm one of the founders of Gemshelf. And before I get into my demo, I just wanted to ask a question to the audience if anybody wants to shout out and answer a guess uh, about how much time the average person spends on, a con on content searches per year. Anybody just want to venture a guess? Shout it out. 27.6 hours. Okay. Eight, well, that's a little more than hours in a day, but 327, the actual number is around 494 hours 
per year searching for content, which if you break it down is actually like a third of your work life, which is kind of ridiculous. There's two reasons why this is the case. The first is that in the year 2014, there was as much information created as there was from 10,000 BC to 2008. So there's basically been an explosion of information that's being created. And on average, within most medium-sized companies, you average, estimate about 300 different SaaS applications within a medium-sized company. So what does that essentially mean? Is that means that there is a abomination of content in a ton of different places, and it's extremely difficult to, for you to find what you're looking for when you actually need it. And what that means is that you're losing time and productivity in that result. And that's what Gemshelf exists to do. We make it easier to capture, organize, and manage information so you don't spend 500 hours a year looking for content. So I'm just going to take you through the Gemshelf that we use as a company to show you a little bit about how it works. So this is what the interface looks like. Uh, let's just say one of the key principles of Gemshelf is being able to find any type of information which by default means you have to be able to put any type of information there. So that means that there's articles on the internet that you can store in here, documents, that means PDFs, PowerPoint, Excel, also your content from your cloud platforms, images, of course, uh, links to different web content, videos, the whole nine yards. So for example, uh, images, if I just want to pull up an image, here is actually the infographic where I grabbed that nifty little piece of information of uh, content searches, 494 hours per worker at a cost of over $14,252 per employee per year. So it's really easy to kind of just access different types of information even if you don't know what you're looking for. So let's just say, for example, I'm looking for articles that my business partner, Sidarius, has added into the system. Uh, in particular, maybe I'm looking for stuff on uh, Envoy, because as a SaaS application, we obviously are always thinking about how we can improve our onboarding experience. I can basically add filters and searches and keywords to get to a much more digestible view of information and to content that interests me without knowing exactly what I'm looking for all the time. So this is kind of what a, a page of content looks like in this case is an article. We actually scrape internet-based uh, information so it renders directly in our browser. So we index all that content so it becomes searchable. This is about how awesome little Mario Brothers uh, makes onboarding nice and easy. So that's a little bit about being able to find content. Another key element of any sort of findability tool is actually making it easy to get content into the system. If it's difficult to get information in, nobody's going to use it. There are a number of different ways in which you can do that, and I'll show you that right now. The first is you can just simply bulk upload a bunch of files from your desktop. So just to give you an idea, this happens rather quickly, even though we're on a shared open internet connection. We're going to basically upload this information as it gets uploaded. Not only are we adding it to the system, we're actually indexing all of that content so it becomes searchable. So I'll show you that in a moment. The other way you can access information, and so as we see here, uh, this is all new content that was added a few seconds ago by myself. We're automatically generating uh, thumbnail images on that, and more interestingly, we're indexing the content that's inside of that. So if I ran a search for something like crowdfunding, we're going to see that from a uh, recent first perspective, that there's going to be like a whole host of content that appears, and we're actually searching inside of that document to be able to find that content. Another way in which it's really easy to get content into the uh, system is, and an important distinction that I want to make is, we're not trying to in any way, shape, or form replace Google Drive, Dropbox, Microsoft OneDrive. Those are all platforms that we all adopt and use on a daily basis. All we're looking to do is essentially connect to these platforms, index that information so it's easier for you to find. You don't have to guess where it resides. So in this import content place, you have the actual option to import content or actually sync to your existing cloud accounts. What that means is that every six hours, we're actually going out and calling the files that you synced to see if there were actually any changes to that file so we could update it from a search perspective so we're pulling the most relevant search information. So, been doing a number of 
interviews on uh, social media with people to help us with our campaign, and I'm just going to upload these to my folder. It may take a second, but essentially what we're doing is, in a matter of seconds, just going in, syncing that content, indexing it so it can be searched and found. And for everybody that's into Microsoft, uh, at the end of April, we're going to actually be synced with OneDrive as well, so you'll be able to find that information too. Last piece of uh, information real quick, I just want to talk about how it's easy to capture all types of content. Web content as well, we have a nifty little web clipper, which is a browser plugin, available Chrome, uh, Firefox. And so if I'm finding interesting content <coughs> on the internet, I can actually capture it. This is a great article from uh, VC at Redpoint talking about how knowledge is increasing geometrically. And instead of having to actually take the time to stop, send an email to my colleagues, figure out what to say, I can actually in two seconds grab that content, put it into Gemshelf so it actually can be found. So that's a little bit about Gemshelf, and uh, thanks a lot, and looking forward to your questions. All right, good job, good job for the demo. Cool. Okay, cool, so obviously, uh, you know what, you have a big contact indexing engine, so um, a lot of, some of these files look like they're residing on the private network, some of these are up on the, on the cloud. So uh, where is your indexing happening? Is it happening uh, behind the scenes at the enterprise? Is your indexing happening in the cloud? Are you, are you copying data? Like, what's the relationship between that? Great question. So uh, we're actually copying the data, so that's the only way we can actually index it from a search perspective. So uh, we have, I, you know, I'm not a tech guy, but we have a multi-server cluster, so there's the application layer and then there's the indexing layer. So that's why you kind of see the thumbnail images automatically populated. That's us actually indexing that content ourselves. And that's why there's the sync, so every six hours we're actually going out and seeing if there's a difference between our most recent copy and what exists in Dropbox, so we can provide. The most so, so, and your, your information, is that residing in, in the cloud, or is that, or is, is your yeah. index? Okay, so, we're on AWS. So, so, of course, there may be people who may ask about privacy and confidentiality of documents. Are you HIPAA certified? Can you handle legal documents that require high levels of. of um, no, that's not really our market. Okay. So you're really focused on so, so much more sort of like, like sales and marketing. Like, what are your typical markets? So uh, project teams. So I, I guess uh, the reason why I pulled up our gem shelf is because we're always working on different projects. So any entrepreneur in the room can probably resonate with this. You're doing a number of different things at any given time. So we have our, you know, our customer success, you know, track that we're working on, focusing on that. So. Um, our technology stack. So essentially, if you've got a small project team, you can. It's the it's the great way to complement. Sounds good. I saw a hand up here. Yes, right there. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. Awesome presentation. Um, I just, question: Are you thinking about pulling the data out in any way to compete with something like Guru, where you know? Uh, in a way, you know, there's like masters of d different cards of information, or is all the information just going to live within the documents themselves? We are at, uh, I mean, we're creating a bunch of additional information on top of this. So when I was going through the, the filters on the left-hand side, that's all metadata that we're automatically adding. Uh, over time will be some, you know, automatic tagging as well. So we'll be suggesting different types of content based on your preferences and what you're interested in over time, kind of Amazon-esque. Right now it's more just adding certain metadata, like who created it, when was it created, tags, folders, uh, source of content, and then the rest just sits in the back. So, um, yeah. yeah Paul, Paul, Paul. No, I just really wish you guys were PCI or HIPAA compliant. You just would have made my whole day a lot better. But, <laughs> yeah. come on. That's good. At some point. Have you thought about sort of like a, a version of it, like maybe residing in the network next? Like, and I'm sure my friend James would be very, very appreciative of the fact that the OneDrive integration, this does make me think a little bit about what's happening on the SharePoint side. So can you, can you can, can compare and contrast to like, especially if you're doing the OneDrive integration and doing all this document search, you know, how does this compare with what's happening on SharePoint? And then of course, the second thing is, can you, are you thinking about an enterprise located version of Gemshelf? We are. Just, it, you know, it's uh, not exactly our key market to start because there is SharePoint. So many people use SharePoint. Ultimately, we see this as a complement to what SharePoint's doing. We're intended to be really lightweight, easy to use knowledge management. So literally anybody can sign up for a free trial put this to use within a matter of minutes, especially if you're, you know, because your content either resides in your desktop, it resides in the cloud somewhere, or you do a lot of internet research. Yeah. Oh, 
So I noticed, uh, I just happened, I was looking at your webpage, there is pricing and you get a certain amount of storage for the monthly fee. Mm -hmm. If you've got stuff stored in Google Drive or Dropbox or even on your local computer, if, when you sync that to GemShelf, does that go against that quota of storage or is it still stored in Dropbox but just like indexed in GemShelf? Great question. It does, uh, so <laughs> there's two, uh, let me just go back to the screen that'll make it a little bit easier. Um, so if you're actually importing the content, which we see as like a less valuable activity, that counts against your storage, but if you're actually syncing it against Dropbox and Drive, it does not, because that's where it resides. So that's a simple question. I think you get a lot more value out of the, the sync, but some people may say, you know, before we're really comfortable using Gemshelf, whole hog, we want to import a bunch of files first. So. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably be in the opposite philosophy. It's like, you know, if I wanted, I wouldn't want my data to be copied because then that's a whole versioning can of worms that don't want to open. But anyway, um, yeah, cool. We had one final question there. Yes. Um, yeah. So it seems like there's a lot of opportunity for collaboration. Um, you know, you're pulling in links, you're pulling in videos. Um, have you, or is your team looking into that kind of uh, feature set for teams to start really building things on this platform, or is it really just for an organization, uh, organizational purpose? Uh, I'm not sure I totally understand the question. Like, are we planning on exposing like an API so people can customize the platform for their own particular uses? Well, rather than just like searching for content that my uh, coworkers are putting onto this platform, mm -hmm. you know, like, is there the ability to, um, you know, like make annotations or um, really like uh, build a, a custom experience, build projects on here? That is a great question, uh, not likely. So the vision of the company is, as you get with the Dropbox Drive integration and the OneDrive is to just continue to integrate with other best of breed cloud platforms. And so I think project management, so there are a lot of other tools out there. So you know, in the summertime, there's gonna be integrations with, you know, I don't know if it's gonna be Asana or Jira, you know, but use some other tools that actually already kind of solve that problem. We really just want to be uh, making it easier for you to not have to spend time looking for information across all these things. Good stuff. I couldn't help but notice you had that little free trial page because you set something up for tech breakfast, I see here, right? Yeah, so... Okay, uh, here's the discount. Let's go. No, yeah, so <laughs> if you go to our, our actual website, uh, you can register for a free trial, but it'll put you into a queue. But if you are interested in checking it out, like right away, you just go to get that gem shop at Tech Breakfast, and then you put this free trial, and I'll take you through a two-step registration wizard. You can create your own instance and check it out. We don't require you to give us credit card information or anything like that. All right. So feel free to check it out, and come find me later on. Sure it was just was yeah. it oh, gem shop yeah. slash Tech Breakfast? Get dot gem shop dot com slash Tech Breakfast. Okay, good. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you guys. Good job. Good job. Cool. All right, as we plug in at number three, we're going to do a couple more of our shout outs. I saw Lisa, I saw our friends from Grassi, whoever's got the mic. Where is that? Okay, I'm going to give my friends to Grassi while, while uh, he gets their friends to uh, Lisa. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ken Castillo, senior manager of Grassi and Company. Uh, the company is 250 people strong. We're over three offices in the Northeast. We work with startups and middle market technology companies. And what I'd like to say is that he bridges the gap between all the legal jargon, the finance jargon. And uh, hopefully, make your lives easier when the time for funding comes. Thank you. All right, good stuff. All right, yeah, the government gets their cut first this week, though. All right, cool. And then, of course, our friends from Eisenberg. Hello, uh, my name is Lisa Eisenberg. I'm the founder and principal of Eisenberg Law Firm. The, we are immigration attorneys. Uh, we do one and only thing it's visas and green cards. And the Majority of our clients are people like yourself, are people in tech industry and startup founders and uh, technology professionals. Uh, we do all kinds of uh, work visas based on you know, working investment. And uh, one thing that we do that is kind of special and that not many people know how to do is all one visas for technology professionals and for startup founders, which is a very, very good option. Uh, 
So our friends from Belgium, uh, welcome to New York. And uh, anyone else who is interested, uh, there is a tech breakfast that discounts for initial hey. donations. All right, that's good. And um, one of the final things we have to take the mic is that we've run a couple workshops. We actually, did a couple workshops with some of our folks. I think we might be doing some with DLA. If not, we will be. I know we've done some with our with our Kiss Pat and the immigration law firms. And the immigration law ones are surprisingly packed every time we do them. So. There's a lot of like non-natives here in New York and uh, trying to become tech natives. So that's a big thing. Just goes to show that the New York tech economy is really, really pumping here. So, all right. Uh, I don't know if I have any more of my, my uh, sponsor shots. I don't know if my friends here are from Fiverr. If they're not, check them out. They have a special discount code, of course. For those of you that are not familiar with Fiverr, it's a great little gig economy. You can get stuff done for as little as five bucks. We use them all the time. Actually, one of them, one probably one of their first customers. A lot of the explainer videos you see people doing on Fiverr, and there's lots of other stuff. Um, check it out. I think it's uh, fiverr.com slash nytv. I think maybe the uh, uh, sponsor just got a code. Our friends from uh, DonkeySoft and the folks who built our Tech Breakfast to Go app, so definitely check them out. They're really helpful. Our friends from Nexus, some of my Nexus friends are here. Are, they're our staffing firm partner, and uh, uh, they've been helping out with a bunch of stuff. They're, they're awesome. They're great. Check them out. Our friends from Fairfax County, and that's an actual county in Northern Virginia. If you're not familiar with that, they want you to consider Northern Virginia because their space is cheaper than New York. So check it out. <laughs> and of course, our friends from SimilarWeb, uh, who have been around, they've been supporting us for a while. We haven't seen them here in a while, but definitely check them out. They've got a lot of options on the marketing front uh, for web properties. Okay, we're going to do a, one real quick thing before we do our, our next presentation. We do an open job shout out. We're going to do a real quick. Um, this once again, this is this is how this works. An open job shout out for those of you on startups or tech companies that are looking to hire. We're going to give you an opportunity to shout out what you're looking for, or if you're looking for a job, we're going to do it really quick. We do this 30 second LinkedIn style introductions. Um, if you're a staffing firm, please sit on your hands for this one. We want to give the folks who are actually hiring a chance to do the shout out. So, who here is hiring? Wants to do a quick shout out? We got one right there. Okay, let's go and let's give it up. We got a couple more back there. Hi, I'm Steve I work at Datarama as a marketing analytics company. Uh, we are hiring for sales engineers, sales people, customer, uh, client success, account management, etc. across the board. Datarama. Okay, great. Cool. Up there. Yeah. yeah, good morning. My name is Fabio. I'm solo founder of Smash, a network for recreational tennis players. I'm already uh, raised some angel money investment, and I'm looking for a full stack developer and a CTO. Smash, love that name. Okay, great, up here. Hey guys, my name is Phil. Uh, I'm the US head of recruitment for Get, which is a global black car service. Uh, we're also in New York City. Um, we're looking for, right now, an IT support engineer and our US head of marketing, just because he recently got promoted to global head of marketing, which is awesome. Uh, and if anyone wants free $10 uh, coupons for rides, just let me know. Oh yeah, I think I get the last time I was here, that was nice. Okay, good. Hi, I'm Trina. I lead business development for Sociable. We're an employee advocacy and social media amplification platform. And uh, we've just opened our New York office and we're looking for business development representatives. So any junior sales roles, uh, if you know of anyone, please come and meet me. All right, Sociable. Yes. Sociable. Okay, great. I think we did we have one else. You guys are doing a good job and a good job. And of course, our folks from Breather. You know, you gotta do something with that 35 million bucks you heard. <laughs> All right, we're looking for a general counsel at Breather here in the New York office. So if you know anyone, let me know. Done and done. You should talk to my dealer friends. Okay, great. We're gonna talk to you right now. Okay, cool. Uh, all right. Okay. Oh, you guys are hiring. All right. Something. Hey, listen, we are uh, looking for a young uh, startup attorney. If, any, uh, if anyone knows a good attorney looking to work in the venture space, let us know. We're looking to hire in New York and New Jersey. All right, good. Okay, cool. Oh, all right. Well, that was good. You guys did a good job on that. Speed job shout outs. All right, we're going to do event shout outs in the next one. But in the meantime, Link Sphere, let's get Lincoln.